Hi, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about impact of taking action and what that means depending on what action you need to take. So depending on where you are on the path of the distress, as we like to call it, you know, if you're if you're just starting and you know that you're going to be distressed um, and the stressful situation has put you in that position, but you want to take action now to make sure that you understand the potential impact, then obviously there are going to be more options. Um, and our team can talk to you about all of those steps. But if you're on the other side, or if you've received a foreclosure letter, then obviously the options are going to be less and the impact may be higher. So some of the impacts that you may not have thought about are some of the ones that we're gonna go over right now. And again, we have our team here that are going to be just doing a discussion on different scenarios and different impacts and uh, just to give you an understanding of what you should expect. And again, we always, always recommend that you start the process early so that you have the best chance and the, and the time to be able to put some of these strategies together. So the first one is personal impacts for you and your family. Um, obviously, this is going to be more than just you. If you have a family, it's going to impact them as well. I think uh, one of the first impacts is really, like you noted, to understand how many other family members is it impacting. Even though you might individually um, have a situation where you're living by yourself, single for whatever reason, where are you going to go? What's going to happen next? Uh, is there family support out there for you? Um, there's ways of support on a relocation that can come into play. We've discussed it in other webinars, but it's something that you need to really factor. What's the domino effect of the people that are involved? Yeah, and I, I would just like to include um, with the impact, um, I have a lot of clients that reach out to me that their um, family is growing, but you know, when they first bought the home, they only had one child. Um, they now have a child on the way and they need to move and they just can't um, you know, sell their home for what they owe. And that's, that's another reason to do a short sale. And the, and the banks will take that into consideration. Your family's growing and, um, you know, it's, it's impacting your family because you only have a certain amount of bedrooms and you're having a new child on the way. Um, that can be one of your hardship reasons for the family. Um, when you have to go over your hardship letter with the bank, which we'll go over, or we've already been through in the past. So one of the areas that I consider to be more serious is if the family includes small children or children, school age children who need to prepare to go to another school and how the family is going to get another place to rent. Um, some of these things need to be taken head on if you know you're going down the pre foreclosure road or, or the short sale road. Uh, you want to do some of these things in anticipation of that. So waiting until the house sells or waiting until the bank gets the door um, needs to be addressed. Some of these things need to go on much earlier than you would anticipate. Okay, the next we want to talk about credit impact. Um, obviously, we're not going to go over exactly how much your credit is going to get impacted because it's different for each and every person, depending on everything else that they're considering here. And this also changes uh, and it's different. Their algorithms may change. By the time you watch this, it may even be different than this. But right now we have this criteria that they're really looking at. And there are different things. There are different options that we talked about in our last video. So there is loan modification, uh, forbearance agreements and repayment plans, uh, refinancing the loan. There's bankruptcy. There's selling the property regularly versus waiting and having to do a short sale. You know, all of these will impact your credit differently. And we can't really tell you it's going to impact your 200 points or anything like that, but you will know that it will impact your credit somehow. And remember that the reason that Joe and his team work pretty hard negotiating with the lenders is to minimize that credit impact. Um, because lenders are the ones that are reporting all of these things. So it's going to be important and a key ingredient on how you negotiate. Yeah, that's, the, yeah. And, and what I first, the most important thing, in, in, in my opinion, on a short sale is how's that uh, short sale lender going to report it to, to the credit bureau? Um, I always ask for paid in full. Um, you know, there's different other ways. For example, if it's a foreclosure, if you go to foreclosure, it gets reported to the, to the credit bureau as um, charged off 
um, or as a foreclosure, um, which, you know, with short sale, we ask for it to be paid in full, reported to the credit bureau that way. Um, that's, you know, in my opinion, talking to clients, that's the best way that it can be reported is paid in full. It's just like a regular payoff. Um, in regards to the, um, you know, situation after a short sale, I have clients that actually buy a house again after a short sale, but they were current on their mortgage. Um, I have clients that miss one payment. They can buy a house again in, in 30 days, 60 days. But again, everybody's situation is different. Um, so it's important that you contact us to see what kind of situation best fits you. Um, I'd like to mention about um, the bank wanting you to do a um, sign over the deed to them um, to avoid a foreclosure. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of a neat little package. You give us the keys, you sign over the deed. We may give you some money to move and so forth. There may be other alternatives to that that can indeed um, help the credit process for you. So even though you, it might be that you are definitely going to leave that home, the method that is chosen that to leave that home is what's important. And that's why we want to express that if you are unable to get loan modification, then it appears sometimes that the least impact on your credit would be a short sale. Um, Michelle, if I can add to that, um, you're, mm -hmm. it's called a deed in lieu um, is what the bank is. The full name is a deed in lieu of foreclosure. Um, you know, what happens is the bank, you're basically handing over the keys to the bank um, and they don't have to go through the foreclosure process. Um, in a deed in lieu of foreclosure, it's not guaranteed that the deficiency is not going to be forgiven. So it's always important if when you're negotiating a deed in lieu of foreclosure, if you decide to go that route, uh, make sure a that how it's going to be reported to the credit bureau and B um, Is my deficiency going to be forgiven and with the short sale both those things are automatic. It's going to be a forgiven um, On all my short sales um, and also B it's going to be reported to the credit bureau is paid in full and the deficiency is going to be forgiven So um, Joe, so again, why would why would excuse me? Why would someone choose deed in lieu of foreclosure? What would be uh, I get a lot of people in a little foreclosure, and they said, you know, they didn't know any other options. It's just uneducation um, about the process. Um, you know, they thought that was the only option that, because the short sale lender wants the fastest way. The fastest way is that deed in lieu of foreclosure, um, where short sale takes, you know, sometimes 60 to 90 days for an outcome. A deed in lieu of foreclosure hits pretty quick, um, and they get that, they can take over the property fairly quickly. In regards to you know the whole process um, so again a short sale um, is probably your better option and that's why it's important to get us a call as soon as possible so somebody in a distress I mean, might need that extra time and absolutely. we we want to give it to them yeah absolutely absolutely Kim you're gonna say something yeah, thanks. Uh, one point I wanted to make too why it's so important to get the consultation free consultation is they they put little um great sounding slogans i think we've all heard the cash for keys like you said the d and loot foreclosure is really you give us the keys and we get back the house and uh we you get to move on and we get to move on but it, most of the time it only benefits the bank and until a full consultation is understood of all their options you guys point out the perfect reasons as to cash for keys you get a few thousand dollars, but it could hurt you for many years down the road on your credit history and capability of buying a home a lot sooner than you would have been able to. Absolutely. And, absolutely. and actually, Cam, if we can go back on the, the, the money uh, issue, uh, I've seen relocation money is a lot more than the cash or keys money. Um, you know, I was able to get a client recently $10,000, um, where the um, re, uh, deed in lieu of foreclosure, they only offer sometimes two to 3000 um, mm -hmm. if that. Um, so it's important that you know your options and um, again give us a call for a free consultation if in fact someone has recommended you to bankruptcy um, indicating that that might solve all of your issues you do want to have a, a broad range of information before you do so uh, while indeed you can file bankruptcy and then um, cancel the bankruptcy you do want to make sure uh, that you've stepped in the process 
in the appropriate way, as opposed to trying to back up and correct any action. So uh, talking about this with your realtor and then ultimately with Joe is the best way to find out those options. And we can refer you to the appropriate professionals uh, that can answer your tax questions, that can answer your legal questions. And then of course, move on to getting you into something that you more stable in your life and put this distress behind you. Another thing that people don't think about is the future impacts such as jobs. And especially where we live in Northern Virginia, there are lots of government jobs that require security clearances and background uh, searches uh, and verification. So those are things that people don't really think about. And it's not just government jobs, but it's also if you want to be an accountant or other jobs that are really looking to do uh, a financial background research on people. Yeah, um, and you said living in this area, I would say, you know, as high as 20 to 30 percent of my clients are uh, job secure, uh, security clearance holders. And uh, when I first started doing short sales in 2006, um, you know, a short sale would hurt your clearance. Uh, but I think what it, the banks have realized, you know, again, a short sale happens to the best of us. Um, it happens from all kinds of income, from low income families to high income families. Um, and it's not the, the homeowner's fault. It's just the real estate industry we live in right now. People can't sell their homes. In regards to a security clearance, uh, the uh, a security clearance will not hurt, or excuse me, a short sale will not hurt your security clearance. Um, as long as you tell your human resources person at your, your job that you're doing a short sale, because uh, again, you got to remember, we ask for a full forgiveness and we ask for it to be reported to the credit bureaus paid in full. So there's really not a major impact. Um, and also military personnel. Um, I work with a lot of military men and women that um, get uh, orders, uh, PCS orders to move somewhere else. Um, and, and we're able to get a short sale done for them because the banks do have programs available for military men and women um, that get orders to move. And also, um, you know, uh, police force, FBI, CIA, I've worked with them all. And, you know, a short sale does work um, for people that have security clearances and they will not lose it. Yeah, I think that's a, a real critical point because when somebody gets orders, we've seen it in this area, all of a sudden they have a two or three year assignment and maybe they just bought their home and they thought, oh, you know, I'm going to be here for the next five years. Yep. And the world, the world changes, life changes. And especially for a lot of our military people, State Department people, different government uh, specialty areas, uh, all of a sudden they're, they're on call of duty and they need to move. And it might not be advantageous for them to hold on to the home and rent it out. And uh, immediately the home is underwater three months, six months or more. So. I think your consultations have definitely helped a lot of people, Joe, in the in many years in the past. Bring out the fact, Joe, maybe you can talk about the one thing that you talked about was obviously it's not just people who are um, struggling at different levels of, of home values. You've had clients that have had million dollar homes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people don't realize, just like you were saying, that this is not about the homeowner. It's about the market that's really taken an impact. Yeah, I've worked with low income families, high income families. Um, again, you know, I've worked with, you know, I can't go on specific names, but some professional athletes in, in this area to doctors, lawyers. Um, it, it, this has affected everybody. And um, that's why it's important to work with a team like us that have been there and have helped, um, you know, right now I've helped over 3,000 homeowners uh, in Northern Virginia. And it's something I'm proud of. And um, I use my, um, my experiences and, and my contacts at the different banks to help homeowners. And um, in regards to uh, higher income, there's this a stigma on high income families that they're stuck. And there's nothing, there's no programs for them. Uh, but on high income families, there is an answer, a short sale. They don't just look at your income. They look at the whole picture and we'll help you go over your hardship letter. Um, we'll help you go over, you know, every step in the transaction to make sure that, you know, you, you, do the short sale correctly and get it to the right people that can make the answers to give you the answers. Now, Joe, do you think a lot of uh, military people uh, do do short sales because they have maybe a VA loan or a hundred percent loan where, you know, they didn't put anything down and now they have to relocate. 
Thank you, Ida, for uh, mentioning that. Um, we have worked with a lot of clients with a, a VA loan, and it's called a VA compromise. And if you Google that, um, it's a VA program that helps homeowners uh, that are military uh, do a short sale. Uh, the VA is forgiven. It's a full uh, deficiency forgiveness. It gets reported to the credit bureaus, paid in full. And in some uh, instances, you're able to use your VA again. Um, but it's a case by case basis. Uh, but there are programs available to people that are military. Um, and it's actually an easier process, believe it or not, with military personnel, because if you have orders, uh, we don't need your financials. Uh, basically, we get your orders, we send them to the bank. You work with your realtor, of course. Um, but the process is shortened because they don't have to do a financial review. Um, your your hardship is your orders. You have to move. Yeah, I just wanted to say it's both military and civilian who work for the departments of the government uh, who are transferred based on whatever reason. They do give um, transfer recommendations to people. And if they want to accept them, they will let them participate in some of these programs. But the other thing we were talking about was the security clearances. Well, right now you may not have a security clearance issue. You don't have a security clearance. But if you do file a bankruptcy as, a port, as opposed to a short sale, it can impact a future uh, security clearance. Uh, so just be mindful of that. The short sale seems to be the remedy in most situations in order to come back whole some movie money to move and the possibility of a repurchase. Absolutely. If I could add to that too, Michelle, a foreclosure uh, will ruin your, your clearance, as we said. So again, a, in a deed in lieu of foreclosure may as well. That's why it's always good to, to call us and just, you know, ask questions so we can give you the right answers. I think it's also important to note, um, Joe, how many people that you've given consultation to or started helping with assistance in the program how many people have you taken an upfront fee from uh, zero we don't take there any upfront fees. So I think that's a absolutely and again do your research because the banks will even tell you um, every bank will tell you if there's anybody up charging you up front there's a big chance it's fraudulent um, notice nobody should be charging you to help you um, and the banks will tell you the same thing and, you know, I work with all, all these banks and I have a very good relationship with all these banks. Um, when I say all these banks, I mean mortgage companies. I've pretty much worked with all of them and I have very good relationships with not just the banks, but the investors, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Um, so we're able to get you to the right people, um, even if you would like to contact somebody. If you're in a loan modification right now and you need to get somebody high up, call us. I have a list of numbers I can give you. Um, so, uh, you know, again, if it's just a quick question, we're here for you. Perfect. Right. So I want to just talk about um, the spillover effect. So obviously, the longer you wait, the more impact you may have on everything that we just talked about, personal impacts, family impacts, job impacts. Um, some of the things that we just wanted to talk about is obviously if it impacts your credit, it's going to have effects on different areas of your life because you're credit rating really drives obviously the mortgage so your future home purchases um, auto loans uh, credit card rates insurance rates etc so we wanted to have you just think about those things because it's not just one area um, there is obviously this is just a huge stressful situation for a lot of people and it's going to have spillover effects but also the fact that the decisions that you make and the longer you make you may have bigger impacts depending on how far along you are. No, I was just saying, I, I think it's so true. It, it's, it's, we've all been through distressful situations and we all, we all have personal stories we can share. And it's sort of that ostrich, you know, head in the sand image I get. It's easier to want to just kind of tuck your head down and kind of avoid it all. But it really is true that the sooner you can get the insight, get some consultation, and get the information needed so you know your options, you're, you're going to want to keep your head above ground. Yeah, that's a good point, Tim. And, and the impact spill um, is important um, when it comes, it's, it's very important how that bank is going to report that short sale to the credit bureaus. Um, if it's done, like I asked for, as a full forgiveness, um, you can buy a house again. I've seen, I've worked with a client recently that short sold on a Monday and bought a house on a Friday. Um, and also, I've had clients that, you know, short sold and then bought a house a year later. 
Um, it's just, again, it depends. So, I mean, a short sale is not going to ruin you forever. Um, things have changed so much because, you know, I have a lot of clients that want to just hide and they're just embarrassed and they don't want to deal with the short sale. Uh, they're just, they don't want anybody to know they're going through hard times, but you need to make that first step and call us. Um, your privacy is very important to us and we're going to get you the answers you need um, to, to make this get off your shoulders. I think that's a good point. I, I don't know if people really remember that this, all the consultations are private and confidential. So you should feel good about contacting any of us and getting the process started. Um, I really highly recommend that you do do your research. But when Joe was talking about, you know, short sales have changed, there's a big difference between somebody that knows and have contacts and have gone through different scenarios that can really help you through those versus somebody who hasn't. And uh, not to toot your horn, Joe, here, but um, your track record speaks for itself. And it's not that any short sale will get these kinds of results, right? I mean, you can talk about some of that. Right. And, and again, you know, it, it, when you call the short sale department at, at mostly every every bank, uh, you get somebody from the loss mitigation department that's reading from a script. Um, the people I have are actually that are the decision makers, the investors, the bank managers. Um, you know, I have a lot of clients that call me like, Joe, I've been in a loan modification for for almost six months now. They keep asking me for the bank statements over and over again. Well, what's happening is, you know, they're not looking at your file. And by the time they do, your, your finances have already expired and they have to keep asking for them over and over again. So what we can do is get to the decision maker and say, you know, look, this is what's going on. We need their file reviewed and we need it reviewed now. And, and again, I will toot my own horn. <laughs> I'm good at getting that. Um, getting answers is, is my specialty. Um, I know how to escalate files. I can't say who I work with, but I've done congressional inquiries in this area where clients have called me and have needed help. Um, and I've contacted um, our men and women in Congress to call the banks because um, there was a bailout. The government did bail out the banks and there's some programs that are available for homeowners in, in that area if we have to go that high. Um, but we will get results. And um, I, like I said, I've done over 3,000 of these and there's not a bank I haven't worked with. Um, and again, just make that quick call to us so we can give you some uh, context can help your situation. Get you started. So again, I want to talk about uh, the impact of not taking action. Uh, we're all here to help you because we personally have gone through a lot of these scenarios and have worked with clients. And it's our passion to help people like you if you're watching this video. The impact of not taking action or taking the wrong action can have a huge impact on your life and your family's life. So all we're saying is make sure that you fully understand and you have a free consultation and you can have other consultations, obviously, um, just to make sure that you understand the options and the impact of those op options or the impact of not taking those actions. And like we said, start early. Consultations are free and they're confidential. So get started, understand what your options are before it's too late and have a detrimental impact on your life. So feel free to give us a call and we can certainly answer the questions that you may have in a professional and confidential way. Yeah, and I'm always here, like I said, just uh, if you just need a phone number or uh, a contact person at a certain bank or you just want to vent of what you've been through, I'm here. Um, I've, I've seen it all. I've seen, I've seen every situation. So I, it's nothing I've, I haven't seen before. So please just make that first step and, and reach out to us because we actually really do care. Um, we don't charge any fees. Um, my cases mean the world to me and it, and it's, I really try to go above and beyond for my clients to get them results. Um, and so let's, let's help you. Let's, let's get this situation fixed for you. Give us a call. Um, um, you can call me 24 seven. My information's on this website and I look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, I think and just to reiterate to encourage people to, to, to get started with it, even if it is that first call. Uh, Ida mentioned it earlier, we've, we've had family members involved, um, so we've been impacted um, by the whole financial crisis in the past and understand it's stressful, but you can get through this and uh, get on to better and uh, sunny days. And we only get stronger through the challenges that are in front of us so you know you are strong enough to get through it there are other people that are going through it we've gone through it so you will get through it and we hope we can help you through that process